Morning. Just thinking what to do for painting this morning. Uh, I'm just making this up here. I've got a bit of a, a building. I want this in silhouette really because I'm painting wet in wet. So I, it's difficult to leave that area light without using masking fluid. I'm not a great fan of lifting out, I have to say. Um, so it's just, just a simple walk, some, some hills. Um, some trees. Just some sort of design. Just some landscape there. Figure maybe. Just to remind me. Uh, and then sort of canopies. I'm, I'm in two minds as to whether to do this. So sort of winter, I, I, I like winter trees, but maybe late autumn. So, usual colours, uh, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey and burnt sienna. <coughs> Fabriano, 130 pound. <coughs> Wait and, and hey, um, if I if I change my mind and put in some some canopies, like even autumn colours, I'll, pro I'll probably have a go with this uh, nylon brush here, the uh, nylon sable mix. I can see that I'm losing some of the uh, some of the um, paint off the handle. What I do when that starts to happen because it'll go over your whole brush and it'll end up looking like that. Before it gets to that stage or even at that stage I cover it with uh, acrylic acrylic um, varnish. So it's only household stuff. I use this as a medium for the acrylic paintings. Oh, I'll just drop my little card. I mustn't use that. My little plastic. Falling on the floor. Right. Um, so I'll get a brush that I can paint that with, and then I can let it dry. It's worth doing because it'll keep the brush going for, for a lot longer. So no, I'm just going to, a bit of varnish, just, just paint it on. Especially where it's starting to peel. And I can do this a couple of times, then, it, then it'll preserve, preserve the coating on the brush. Right, I'll uh, put that somewhere. I'll just uh, leave that in my pot, in my brush holder for the moment while that dries. That will, that will dry in no time. Bear with me. Right, okay. I'll just let that dry off. It takes a few minutes. I won't need it for a while. Right, okay. Hake, wet paper. See my copyright notes, so I'm working on this. There's a space here where my hand is that I could probably pin something up. So I don't really want to compromise the picture area, like the, the vision. But I hope you can see that. I've been advised to do it because of Paul Taggart I mean, he's uh, standing with YouTube compromised because he's, I think he's uh, attempting to sue someone who's uploaded some of his videos and now he's counter suing him and YouTube seems to wash their hands of it and reduced his standing. I don't know. Right? If you want to know more about it and especially if you're doing these videos, um, you need to um, go on to Paul Taggart, Taggart. A very good demonstrator, done lots of videos, and it's a shame that it's happened to someone like him. But it seems that we have little protection, so that hopefully is incontrovertible or unarguable. It's there, it's my YouTube channel, and it's there throughout the video. See how we go with this. Maybe we do have to take some sort of responsibility for what goes on. 
Right, I'll put a simple sky in. I'll uh, put a bit of uh, bit of raw sienna. Just oh, paint over me. Copyright. Yeah, oh, I'll wipe that off. It's got acrylic, a bit of acrylic varnish on it. The paint's all over. I put a bit of a path in this little building here. Did that in some sort of grey. Don't forget to have some cloth. To, uh, a little bit of light red in there, I think. Just to, just to warm it up. Now some blue. To the mulch ring. A lot of the sky is going to be covered up, so I'm not too bothered. And a bit of a cloud to cover up with. A bit of ultramarine. A bit of a lizard. Just a bit dark. Right, okay, that'll do. Quite a simple sky. Bright day. <coughs> it's a lovely bright day here in London. But you can see where the, where the paper expands. You, you can reclip it, keep it nice and flat. And remove the spare water that congregates at the bottom of the page. Otherwise it will it'll dry back and you get a cauliflower. Right, okay, let's. Uh... Well, I'm going to dry that off. Take your headphones off. I don't want to completely dry it, I want some. Background, stronger background colour, blue, a bit of red. Just put in some hills. Paint around that. Oh, going to put it over there. And put a bit of yellow in there. Uh, bit of Simosiana in there. Now that I hope will just merge there. Uh, with a bit of tissue, I'm just going to blot, blot out there, just to dry that bit. Right, okay. Uh, put in some some uh, nice greeny, grassy, strong stronger stuff here. I can put some. Bushes over the top of that. No, that's going a bit of a wrong. I meant to really, I should have kept that. Uh, so I was going to go over that with a. Uh, I'll go, I hope that dries all right then. Nice, rich colour here. Warmer greens.
Okay, so that's lost it a bit there. Um, but we'll uh, progress. If it goes too long, I'll scrap it. Paint on the other side. Right, I'll dry that off. Headphones off. I'm just going to put a path in. Use red and blue, mostly red, or stronger on the red side. Okay. Um, I want to put in some 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 more stuff there, so I'll use a bit more harder mix. I, I could have tried to sort that compromised bit out. Right, let's put a bit of detail in there. Uh, blue, red, yellow. This sort of shadow areas in the in the grass and the There's a bit of a rigger now. Just thick, thick paint, just to give a bit of detail. Just adding a bit of texture, just a good bit of interest in this foreground. Not a lot, but. thick primary colours here. Right, 
Right. <coughs> Let's have some colours now, some autumn colours. I reckon the brush is about. Well, if it's not, I'll use a smaller brush. So blue. Generous. Oh well, that's uh, the, these were trees that come up from here. Get some warmer colours. I'll put in some uh, purpley. Mix behind that tree. I don't think that's the right colour, but just give a bit of background to the, the brighter, warmer colours. Hopefully, it will look a little a bit distant behind. Let's that down there. Okay, there goes a bit of bit of ivy green, so primaries, red. Blue, yellow, thick. So we'll just put some in here. More green in it, haven't you? I'm going to do something similar on the other side, but smaller. So, sienna, bit of yellow, a bit more blue in there, I think. Some shadow in there. No, good dark. I'm leaving out the paints grey. I'm just using blue, red, and the crimson at the moment. A little blue. So that gives a good good rich dark but without the deadening effect of the paint's grey. I'll put some more of that colour in the other side I think. Two reds and the blue. Just discovered that. What nice dark in this area here, because this light is behind, so we're getting these shadows, shadow parts of the foliage. Just lengthening that up along there. So look, blue, the two reds, got a lovely, really deep, rich purple. So, and if you add a bit of yellow with that, you'd get a sort of a green. Uh, it's just 
bit more texture in here. Right, clean that brush. I've bent a couple of some hairs on that, putting it back in the uh, in the the cover with this little bit of little tube. Careful. So let's see how my other brush is coming on. Well there we are, it's just a little bit soft now, but I'll give that another coat. <coughs> so I'm pleased with that. <coughs> right, let's uh, find the rigger. So that dark colour again, that red, reds, blue, so we'll, no, look at that nice and thick. Now you need to, when you're doing these trunks, they're holding up a lot of oak trees, so You need to st quite stiff paint in this and come on, some up here. Remember, they've got to hold up a lot of trees, so so let's just uh, So you get the branches coming down and Just doing some detail in there. And let's come up here now with that. What I can do is just put some blue ones in here. Fairly strong, but look, because I put the blue behind, I can put some distant trees in there, or at least further back. There, we'll do the same on the other side. Quite like that dark.
there. Who's here? And put a bit of a bit of greeny. Anchor those trees into the murk. All right, I'll use a bit of blue. Just Show the shadow. Okay, it's a very, very simple picture, but that I seem to be struggling with. <coughs> right, we'll have a figure. Think, figure right, right, maybe, maybe there. So we'll put a bit of red. Um, quite large, well, Give that a sign. I really didn't know what I was going to do this morning for this one. It's literally made up. Right, put that on there. We'll have a look at it in a in an ounce to see what we've got. Well, there we are. Oh, we've got a little figure walking into the landscape along the track into the Surrey Hills. There are some aspects of a traditional watercolour here with the way the washes have dried on top of other washes, which I'm quite pleased with. Um, just a simple country scene. Do we need some boids? Some boids? Oh, uh, yeah, that's. Well, I would have thought we done my bigger. I lose things in my eyes, in my murk. Just a little bit, bit of blue, let's have it. Okay. Let's move the camera around a bit so we can see that more or less full on. Oh, there we are. Oh, quite pleased. I was going to put a building in that, but I forgot. But I don't think it needs a building now. It is essentially a, a, just a country scene, walking the Surrey Hills. Could be anywhere. It's just a made up view, but I've discovered a really good mix for dark trunks. And it's this uh, mixing the ultramarine with the light red and, and um, alizarin crimson. And if you add a good dollop of yellow with it, you can get some nice greens too. Hence this. So this is sort of late autumn, autumn, autumn walk in the Surrey Hills. Autumn in the Surrey Hills. Late autumn in the Surrey Hills. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I'll give you a final view of that. Hope you enjoyed that. See you soon. Bye-bye.